Hey guys, Dusty here. Today I'm at my local running store, Couch and Valley Running, here on Vancouver Island. And I wanted to do a quick little overview of 10 of Hoka's shoes in their 2022 lineup. So we'll get started with an ultra lightweight daily trainer, and that is the Hoka Rincon 3. So very versatile shoe, um, for myself at least. I've done long runs, short easy runs, tempos, intervals in the shoe. Love how it feels, it has a ton of cushion for how lightweight it is. And like I just mentioned, it handles a wide range of paces and distances. And now I have the Hoka Mach 4. This is easily my favorite shoe in Hoka's lineup. And I should mention the Mach 5 is, it's either has just been released or is being released very shortly. So depending on where you live, you should be able to pick up some Mach 4s at a discounted price. So the Mach 4 was all the rage when it was released last year. And it's another daily trainer with a heavy focus on performance. Um, this shoe in particular would be one of my top options if I had to do a race in a shoe that was not carbon plated and didn't cost $300. Very comfy on foot. Uh, I love the ride and cushion of this shoe. It's not too firm, it's not too soft. It's very responsive. I was a little concerned about grip on the Mach 4. It doesn't actually have any rubber. It's just a, what they call a rubberized EVA, but I haven't had any grip issues. The outsole on mine might be wearing away a little bit faster than what I'm used to, but overall I have no issues with this shoe. And if you're looking for a more uh, performance inspired daily trainer, look at the Mach 4. Okay, so now I'm going to be getting into some shoes that are more what Hoka is known for. Uh, they're big soft cushioned midsoles and we'll get started with the Clifton. So this is the Clifton 8, one of Hoka's more popular shoes. Uh, it's a daily trainer, very cushioned, soft feeling. I should mention this is a neutral road running shoe, but all of Hoka's shoes, they all have a very wide base, so they're going to be inherently a lot more stable than neutral shoes from other brands. And people love this shoe, they'll race marathons in it. Other people, this will be like their easy recovery run shoe. Usually comes in a bunch of different colors, not just this black men's version, and uh, is also available in wide widths. All right, now we have the Arahi. So with the Arahi, you can think Clifton, but with more stability. So Hoka in their stability shoes have what they call a J frame. So you can kind of see it makes a J here, starting on the lateral side of the shoe, going through the heel and then up on the medial side and essentially that's just a higher dense foam and it's going to prevent your foot from falling in or pronating and it gives the shoe a very stable ride. Another difference with the Arahi and Clifton is that the Arahi fits slightly wider and is also available in wider widths. All right, now we have the king of Hoka, the Bondi. Now there's a new version of this shoe coming out very shortly, but regardless, uh, this shoe I know at this store is their best-selling Hoka, and I would imagine at almost every other store that carries Hoka, uh, this shoe is gonna be their best seller. So big, thick midsole, uh, tons of support, tons of cushion. A lot of people that have foot problems will turn to a Bondi. Uh, sometimes they might put an orthotic in it. Um, a lot of nurses at work will wear Bondi's. A lot of old people will, will wear Bondi's for walking. And then of course runners who are looking for that max cushion for their long runs, easy runs, they love their Bondi's too. In fact, if I had to open a store and sell only one shoe, it would probably be the Hoka Bondi. All right, now we have a shoe that this store doesn't carry. This is my own personal pair. It's the Hoka Bondi X. So kind of a weird concept. Uh, think Hoka Bondi, but with a carbon fiber plate inside of it. So first of all, when you compare the Bondi X to the Bondi, uh, the Bondi X is a much faster shoe. But with that being said, it doesn't really compete in terms of speed and performance when you compare it to the other carbon plate shoes out on the market. Um, it's still a very heavy shoe. Um, I use mine as a daily trainer, more so when I'm doing kind of tempo pace. Once I go a little bit faster than tempo when I start doing intervals or race pace, the shoe feels to myself at least a bit big and clunky. And ultimately, I'm not entirely sure who this shoe is for. I suppose if you're a die-hard Bondi fan and you want to try something a little bit peppier, uh, you could look towards the Bondi X. Or if you have a foot issue and you need a shoe that is stiff, uh, look no further. This shoe is unbelievably stiff and it still has that support and cushion of a normal Bondi. So ultimately, I like this shoe when I do tempo runs, but it's certainly a very niche type shoe and um, definitely just not going to be a shoe that's as popular as the original Bondi. 
Now we have another carbon plated shoe, but this one is definitely more geared towards race day and that is the Hoka Carbon X. This is the third version, uh, very similar to version two, except it has a knit upper, and the Carbon X is going to be one of the more stable options for a carbon plated race day shoe out there. And for a lot of runners that train in other Hoka models, and they want something fast and fun for race day, I would recommend the Hoka Carbon X. And I don't have it here, the store doesn't carry it, but there's another carbon plated shoe from Hoka called the Rocket X. That shoe, depending on who you ask, is might be better suited for some shorter distances, but I would say that the Rocket X is probably their fastest shoe. Oh, and the Carbon X comes in quite a bit less expensive than some other carbon plated options out there on the market. All right, now we'll finish with three trail options from Hoka. So we'll get started with the Challenger. Uh, this shoe is what's known as a door to trail shoe, so it can handle a mix of pavement and trails. With this shoe, you're still getting plenty of Hoka cushion. Um, the outsole in particular isn't that aggressive, so that's what makes it good on pavement and hard pack trails. Um, not gonna be the best option for Hoka if you're doing like wet, sloppy trails, that sort of terrain or conditions. Um, you might wanna look elsewhere. Next up is the Torrent. So definitely more of a lightweight, nimble feeling shoe. Doesn't have a big, huge stack of cushion like a lot of the other Hoka's. Personally, if I had to pick a Hoka shoe for racing when it came to trails, uh, the Torrent would probably be my number one option. So now we have a beast of a trail shoe, the Hoka Speed Goat 5. So first of all, one of the most cushioned trail shoes that you can find, uh, big, thick midsole. Also a very durable shoe, comes has a very aggressive outsole, and the rubber is the Vibram rubber. And I have two pairs of the previous version. I have a normal pair and a Gore-Tex waterproof pair. And honestly, I wasn't a huge fan of running in them. I found it to have too much cushion for the trails. Um, I lost a little bit of ground feel, but I've transitioned them to using them as a walking shoe at work. I have another job where I have to walk all the time and I have thousands of miles on both my normal pair and my Gore-Tex pair, and they've proved to be unbelievably durable. I know the Speed Goat is one of the better selling sh trail shoes at this store, and if you like cushion, you want some aggressive outsole traction to help you get through really wet, sloppy conditions, um, look no further than the Hoka Speed Goat. All right, and that's it. Um, I know I left quite a few shoes out of this overview, but this is just what was available to me at my local running store. And for the most part, those are some of the more popular options when it comes to Hoka. And if you have any questions about any of these shoes, just ask them down below and I'll get back to you. And like always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.